Hello and welcome. My name's Campbell. This is Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And of course, autodidactic means to be self-educated. And we need to be self-educated because if we're not, the only choice we have left is to believe what other people tell us. And so that's not what we're about here. At Autodidactic, we're about looking in, getting different points of view and coming to our own conclusions about the world uh, that we inhabit. So today, I want to get into um, a story that, uh, well, it is, it's, it's, very, it's a true story, basically, I guess, but it's about flying machines and, and this technology of different ways of flying um, you know, what was going on in the air. We have all these questions about, you know, airships and vanilla skies and all the towers and all the stuff. You know, so what really was going on? Because, you know, one thing I, I think about is the 1700s were, you know, everything was so amazing, right? All the, you know, the, the carriages, horse carriages were just so ornate and all the art and all the clothes and everything. Um, and then in the 1800s, it all just goes very, you know, um, cut back, basic, black and white kind of stuff. Now, if, if we had those airships in the 1800s, I wonder what we had in the 1700s, right? They tell us we'd had nothing, but um, they had air laws back in the mid-1700s. So there was something going on. Um, so let's get in and have a look at the Sonora Aero Club. So here we are. Uh, this is Mysterious Universe, the strange mystery of the Sonora Air Club, uh, Sonora, sorry, Sonora Aero Club. And it says, in 1850, at the height of the gold rush era in the United States, a slight, unassuming man by the name of Charles August Albert Del Chau immigrated from his birthplace in Brandenburg, Prussia, to Texas where he worked as a humble butcher. He would go on to marry and have three children, finding other odd jobs over the years, such as a farmer, sales clerk, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now, basically, it says, you know, he had a, quite a, a tragic life. His first wife um, and, and children died, and then his second wife died, and he lost more children. But basically, he ended up living till he was 93, and he died in 1923. And it says... Um, by which time he had amassed over 5,000 ink drawings and watercolour paintings, as well as hundreds of pages of journal entries. It would have been considered a relatively ordinary life, with no one thinking much of his hobbies and his work forgotten. But this all completely changed many decades later when his work came to light. Because you see, no one knew. Uh, he basically turned into a recluse. Um, and in his later years, no one really knew what he was doing, right? And then... He died in 1923, and then in the 60s, uh, the house which he was, which he lived in, caught fire. But his descendants were living in the house, and so um, when they were ripping stuff out of the house, um, you know, when it was on fire to save stuff, they ended up finding 12 large scrapbooks, and they composed over 2,000 double-sided pages of drawings, watercolor paintings, and collages all depicting an electric mix of all manner of fantastical aeroplanes, airships, and other aircraft and the likes of something out of a fantasy story. All remarkably intact after the fire. Although it was all very interesting, the family went to throw them away, still not realising the significance of it all. And if it weren't for an eagle-eyed antiques and used furniture dealer by the name of Fred Washington, they would have once again been lost to history. And I mean, I wonder how much, you know, stuff went that way, right? Um, uh, da -da. And then he basically bought them, uh, put them on sale. He promptly um, stashed them away to collect dust under the carpets. It wouldn't be until 1968, so eight years later, 
They were taking a whole new strain for that when an art student named Mary Jane Victor stumbled across the book and put it on display. And basically, um, people saw these pictures that we're going to have a look at in a minute. Um, just as amazing as the paintings and drawings themselves were the journals included within them in which Tao Shaw chronicles in great detail a secret society of flight enthusiasts he calls the Sonara Aero Club, of which he claimed to be a member. The group is described as having around 60 members, possibly more, who would meet regularly in an isolated town of Sonora, California, to discuss new flight inventions and work on innovative designs for the amazing and improbable aircraft pictured in the illustrations and even to test them out in flight in the mountains and nearby desert. So this is back in the 1850s. Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in these weird writings, Dalshaw portrays himself as more of a chronicler, illustrator, and draftsman for the group rather than an actual inventor. Um, da, da, da. His impressive drawings were very cool. And what inventions were these? As according to Dalshaw, they had managed to create navigable aircraft in a time before airplanes with advanced motors and all manners of sophisticated aeronautical technology well before its time. And even an anti-gravity substance referred to as lifting fluid or also known as soupe or soup. Now that's interesting, right? Liquid flu uh, lifting fluid. Could that be mercury, right? Are uh, the Vimanas, from the Vedic tradition, talk about using mercury in gyroscopes to get anti, uh, you know, to get levitation, uh, and also a revolutionary type of long-lasting anti-gravity fuel, which is levitation, um, called NB gas. According to him, the club went through great lengths to protect their secrecy, wearing disguises, having aliases, using codes, some of which were in in Del Shao's own notes and hiding their designs well. There were shower tales of the club's adventures flying these machines over the California landscape and goes into some details about how some of them worked, displaying surprisingly advanced concepts for their time. And he explains that the club disbanded only when the creator of their anti-grav fuel, Peter Menace, died and took the secret formula to his grave. Oh, it is all rather bizarre to say the least, leaving one to wonder if this is a true personal account of real events and people or merely fictional musings and ramblings, which, you know, they love that, don't they, right? Anything that's out of the ordinary, out of, or out of their ordinary script, you know, has to be just someone making stuff up and putting all this time and effort into something um, that they never, you know, it's not like he, he put a book together to try and sell it, right? He was just doing this, what, for just to amuse himself. You know, it doesn't. These stories of, the, of all these books and that being fake, it doesn't make sense when you think about it. Too much time and effort for no reward. Um, critics point out that there is no evidence that Dev Shaw ever lived in or even um, or ever had been to California, although this means little because there is not much evidence of his mysterious and obscure life at all to begin with. I mean, this is 1850s, right? I mean, people didn't have birth certificates back then. So I mean, that means nothing. Um, the world at the time was just, here you go, a lowly butcher and an accountant and a grumpy old man. And so considering he was basically a nobody until a century later when the notebooks and sketches were accidentally found. Da, da, da. So this is all really, you know, of course, um, them just saying, you know, it can't be real. It can't be real because we have no explanation for it. One more fringe idea is that people indeed did witness these experimental flying craft and that they were the orig origin of a flap of bizarre UFO sightings in that area during the years the group was supposedly most active. UFO researcher Pete Navarro has spent many years studying Del Shell's notebooks and for a time was even in possession of many of them, having purchased them for his research. He believes, as do many other ufologists out there, that the secretive Activities of the Sonara Aero Club were responsible for a rash of sightings of unidentified objects in the region um, just about when they were in their heyday from between November 1896 to April 1897. So there you go. So there's even, so there is, 
you know, there's evidence to support that this was real and nothing to support that it wasn't real. I mean, there might not be a lot of evidence, but it's very interesting stuff, isn't it? Um, it says even here that there's, they think there was a secret code in the notebooks. Navarro said that the notebooks refer to a secret society with the acronym NIMSA, although what this entails is unknown. And there's a bit more. So I'll leave the link to this um, whole article if you want to go through it. But I thought now we just have a quick look at some of the drawings. All right. And so in no particular order, this is just um, a couple of the pictures. This says air press motor. And of course, you know, they they because they're sort of colorful and they've got watercolors on it. A lot of people say, oh, they're not, you know, technical or they're not real pictures. But I mean, what? It's just because we've got a bit of colour in them. But um, so we've got here, we've got some pulleys. This is the flank and this is the front rear. So I'm not sure how to read. Okay, so this looks like it's going uh, like a side view up, down, and this is a top view. See the wheels there, the wheels here. So this is some kind of press motor. Um, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> um, this is a bit more of a technical illustration as you can see it looks like we've got two balloons here we've got propellers um and we've got a steering some seats in the middle and steering mechanisms pretty interesting so let's say 94 so 1894 here's another one this is figure seven fall and rise rise and fall myos deck so I'm not see, and like it said, they were doing everything in code apparently, you know, so that if someone found these, that they wouldn't understand what they were. Look at these, right? I've got some airships down here, some cigar-shaped airships. Tuesday, October 7, nineteen fifteen, um, Texas. Not sure if that says Horton, Houston. Sorry, Houston, Texas. Um, but as you can see, this looks like a ship, right? And it's got its propellers here. That might be an a balloon i'm not sure you know like an airship um inflatable but interesting here's another one okay so this one he's got thrill sack he's got like newspaper cuttings riding bumpers of bombing plane stunt of a texan oh so maybe these are articles of when they were seen Airmail is certain soon. Oh. So maybe they were looking to sort of corner the market with their flying machines, but they well I said they said, you know, the leader sort of died and took took the secret to his grave, but I mean, how cool. Here's another one. Flying along. Like I said, they, you know, they're they're meant to sort of look a bit, you know, non-technical, I think. But they've got all these words and numbers around, which no doubt they know. There might be ciphers. But it's very interesting. I think we saw that one. You know, some are more technical, more machine-like. Like this, it's sucking in air, spinning it around, pumping it, jumping it up again, and running it through something. I don't know. An Aerodora. Aerodora, and there is writing in here, but I can't read it. These are only, uh, the pictures aren't big enough. It's all I could find. Uh, 7767. So we've got codes up here and stuff, equations, um, but written so that you can't easily decipher the cipher. 2857. Was he a time traveler? Who knows? Big balloon. Got the wheel on the bottom. Okay, it looks like that folds in. And it floats somehow. But this is the thing. If they had anti-grav, you know, whatever it was, liquid, um, they wouldn't need that many propellers and balloons and things, really. But it also said they had different, you know, different technologies. But look at these things. I mean, this is cool stuff, man. I want to... Much more interesting than an aeroplane, right? Um, did we see that one before? No, I think that's a side view. Some of them, um, I've noticed, are the same picture, but they're of different views. 
which would make sense if they're, you know, sort of a schematic y type picture. And it's like this. So it shows you this wheel. Is it saying it's this part? Maybe. Well, it sure looks like some kind of piston. All sort of very steampunky, too, right? 2005. Was he a time traveler? Who knows, right? All this talk about alternative timelines. I think we've seen that one. Look at that. Don't know what's going on there. Looks like press nose. Something. Lots of pulleys. Uh, here's another one. So, yeah. So, what do you think, guys? Um, you know, they've got the story, they've got the pictures, they've got the books. You know, this guy's written down that they were testing these machines and they had, you know, a few different types of technology to run them. They were testing them. We have um, people, you know, reports of people sighting unidentified flying objects, which is what these would be. Um, and then there's not really much to refute it. And, of course, we know what they do. If they do find this kind of tech, they just steal it for themselves, right? Which, you know, is that what they did? Because, you know, if if they're sort of around 1850s and then their heyday was 18, you know, they were sort of saying 1890s, you know, it's pretty much the time that, you know, we got all these big airships and dirigibles and aeroplanes. You know, is it all stolen tech maybe? You know, we just don't know, right? Because it's pretty interesting that, you know, tech comes out so quickly and it's suddenly everywhere. Is it because these guys had already spent, 50 years um, working it all out. We just didn't know. So there you go, guys. That's the end of the pictures. So just a short one there today, just letting you know about the Sonora Aero Club. So we'll leave the link to the article below. Go check it out. Have a look. Um, and thank you for spending some time with me. I do appreciate it. Of course, thank you to everyone who supports this channel by sharing, liking, subscribing. Make sure you are subscribed if um, if you are, just make because um, people are getting unsubscribed. Um, and of course, share this around, guys, if you like this information. Help me get it out there and um, step sideways of the algorithm. And remember, stay awesome. And I'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now.